In the wilderness surrounding Lake Victoria, a truly one-of-a-kind creature is said to live. This beast is said to be so massive and dangerous that no creature desperate for a drink of the river's water can survive its wrath. Even man is not safe as it is proven to be bullet resistant. Welcome to Cryptid Corner, the series all things cryptids, and today we are going to look into the Dingonek. In eastern Africa, several rivers flow from Lake Victoria, the largest lake in Africa, and many of the rivers that are connected to Lake Victoria flow into dense jungles populated by fascinating animals and other mysteries lying within. These mysteries have captured the interest of many European explorers, some more well-intentioned than others, as you see, much of Africa was still under European control around this time, with the areas that we will focus on today being colonized by the British and nearing German territory. And much of the exploration was done to document the resources, mainly plants, animals, and cultures of the region, along with other mysteries that lie waiting to be discovered. And one explorer who will be essential to our story was John Alfred Jordan, who was also an ivory poacher and a crocodile hunter, which is pretty shitty, but that's not what we're here to dwell on. You see, Jordan wasn't just in Kenya to kill some elephants and crocodiles. He was on the hunt for something far more challenging, and we'll hear more from him later. The Dingonek is one of the most bizarre cryptids I've had the privilege of coming across, and is often one of the hardest cryptids to classify as it falls into many categories depending on the interpretation that you agree with. It is also a very fun cryptid name to say, Dingonek. The Dingonek is described as a 16 foot long creature with the head resembling a leopard or an otter with large saber toothed fangs and a horn, a robust body equipped with scales similar to that of a pangolin and spotted like that of a jaguar, cat like limbs with rough claws and a long tail which sometimes ended in a pointed tip. The Dingonek is said to be venomous, with its tail and fangs fought to secrete lethal venom. Not that it would need it though, as the Dingonek was extremely powerful, said as being as wide as a hippo and easily dispatching the massive prey of the region, like hippos, horses, and without a question, a person. Dingoneks are aquatic creatures, always being spotted in jungle rivers and in parts of Lake Victoria. Due to its scaly description, it was initially classified as a neodinosaur, which is a series of cryptids that are basically surviving dinosaurs or dinosaur-like animals living in the many jungles of the world. Many European explorers, mainly young Earth creationists, believed that dinosaurs were still alive, surviving in the jungles of faraway lands away from prying European eyes. The Dingonek could also be interpreted as a water lion, another series of cryptids that are massive semi-aquatic cats with saber teeth that preyed on the massive jungle animals of Africa. Both of these cryptids are very fascinating, both of these categories rather, and I won't go too far into depth about them in this video, but just know that these cryptids will be covered in the future, they're very fascinating. But enough of that let's look further into the Dingonek. Around 1907, John Jordan would catch word of the Dingonek through the many rumors of the Lumboa people of southern Kenya, and while staying with them, he would attempt to bring the beast down. And while approaching the Migori River, members of his party looking ahead would return terrified describing whatever they saw as a mix between a leopard, a sea serpent, and a whale in the river up ahead. Gordon would reach the river and, in turn, the beast as well. He would take aim and fire at the beast with great accuracy. Despite his lethal aim, the Dingonek would leap into the air, causing Jordan to get the hell out of there, along with his crew. The round seemingly bounced from his head, but nobody really would see it after that, as they quickly got the hell out of there. Very reasonable, very understandable. Best not to find out after fucking around to that degree. 
But there were talks from the Baganda, Wasoga, and Havirondo peoples of the northern regions of the lake that around this time reported a white man shooting a Luquata, which is another cryptid said to inhabit this same area. And the best way I could describe it is a long serpent with dog's head. The killing of the Luquata seemingly caused a sleeping epidemic in the area. Jordan would eventually return to the river later, discovering tracks similar to a hippo's, apart from the presence of very large claw marks within the prints. In 1909, an American big game hunter and author named Edgar Beecher Bronson would interview Jordan and his party for his book, Closed Territory, with the members all giving a more or less identical telling of the incident. Bronson would also tell Jordan about the Luquata that was killed recently, with both connecting the dots and eventually believing that the Dinganek and the Luquata to be the same animal. Charles William Hobley, a colonial administrator in Kenya and founder of the East Africa and Ugandan Natural History Society, would look into the Dinganek. Hobley had a history with Jordan, confiscating his poached specimens and probably leading to Jordan getting his the remains confiscated, sentenced to six months of labor in a Kenyan prison, and deportation to Bombay. But that aside, he believed Jordan's account to be a traveler's tale at first, at least until another account of a similar animal would come in from an unidentified witness. The man claimed to spot the Dinganek floating on a log in the Mara River after a flood, with it matching Jordan's depiction perfectly, aside for it lacking the saber-toothed fangs. The man, too, would shoot the Dinganek, and it would slide off of the log and seemingly escape into the water, never to be seen again. After this, the Dinganek would never be seen. Now, due to the bizarre appearance and nature of the Dinganek and its stories, there are several potential explanations as to what this beast could be. And when I mean several, I mean I don't think I've covered a cryptid with this many ways of explaining it. And in cryptid corner fashion, we're going to start with the most outlandish theories and kind of work our way into more plausible ones. So, let's start with a pretty wild one. Starting with the theory that this is a non-avian dinosaur that survived the KT extinction in the remote jungles of Africa. This one is an extremely tough pill to swallow, even for someone who wants dinosaurs to still be around. For starters, this doesn't really resemble any known dinosaur, besides maybe some type of ceratopsian, I don't know. But then again, with 64 million years to evolve in isolation, it is not far-fetched to believe a dinosaur could come to look like this. Many current and former believers of neo-dinosaurs often make the argument that due to how massive and rough the jungles are to explore, even creatures as large as dinosaurs can go undiscovered. Basically, the same argument that megalodon believers use with the ocean being a vast place, but to a smaller scale. Several undiscovered species are thought to live in the jungles of our world, hidden beneath the thick canopies and obscured by the dense undergrowth. Although, if large animals like okapis and the soa can remain hidden from science for so long, why can't something just a bit bigger not remain hidden as well? Coming back to reality for just a minute, I promise we will we'll get into more fun stuff, but... A large dinosaur chilling in Kenya is damn near impossible. The dino would not only have to survive the KT extinction, but would also have to survive competition with the countless massive mammals and reptiles, different atmospheric conditions to that of the Cretaceous, and a big factor that always gets overlooked, you know, the Ice Age, where in Kenya and in most of Africa, it was far drier and colder with lower water levels meaning there would have been far less jungles and dense rivers on the continent at the time. It was thought to be more forest-like. A big reason why the many explorers believed that dinosaurs could still be living in the jungles of our world is due to an, at the time, common belief during, that during the reign of the dinosaurs, the whole world was thought to be one big jungle. And 
since they have also envisioned the Earth as far younger as it is, they believe the dinosaurs were still alive in the jungles of far-off lands. A common trend involving most neo-dinosaurs is also a trend of taking a mythical or legendary creature from a native tribe's folklore and simplifying it to just a dinosaur, which really sucks because it not only trivializes mythical beings and deities from these sparsely mentioned cultures to being this, some stupid dinosaur, but it can oft over time erase the one-of-a-kind cryptids of Africa, and many African cryptids are pretty damn cool in their own way, and they don't need to be some dinosaur. They're very unique. The main reason the Dingonek was even lumped in with neo-dinosaurs was due to its scales and its fangs, which were seemingly meant to resemble that of a snake's fangs more than a saber-toothed cat's. But while we're talking about cats, many disregard the scales and the reptilian aspects of this and consider the Dingonek a water lion. It does kind of fit the bill of a terrifying jungle cat of legend, but only when you disregard all of the obviously non-feline features like the horn, the scales, which are, you know, more consistent with saber tooth cat things as well. But this theory is interesting as Jordan had even said that the scales resembled that of a leopard's pattern, implying the other features could have been some weird exaggeration or maybe some strange growths on it, I don't know. I do feel there is something going on with water lions in general, but I don't think that the Dingonek was a water lion personally. It kind of seems too distinct to be a water lion. Another more plausible theory uh, regarding the Dingonek that I kind of like a lot is that it's a colossal pangolin. Giant pangolins, the largest living pangolins to this day, are known to inhabit the same territory near Lake Victoria that the Dingonek is said to, although they got nowhere near 10 to 16 feet long. But there are extinct species of pangolin that got far bigger than modern pangolins. Additionally, in 1978, James Powell would find several parallels between the Olmaima and a giant pangolin, believing it to also have been a potential match for the Dingonek as well. And minus, you know, the horn and fangs, a colossal semi-aquatic pangolin matches the description pretty damn well. And I mean, even to this day, pangolins aren't the most well-understood animals, so maybe it is possible that they could reach massive sizes in isolated pockets of jungle like their Asian relatives did. A more interesting theory is that the Dingonek is actually an undiscovered freshwater walrus that inhabits the waters of Lake Victoria. This would explain the fangs, or rather husks, along with its large frame. This theory is often backed by a pretty popular creature shown in the Brackfontaine Ridge rock illustration in South Africa, which despite its very far distance, seems to bear similarities to the Dingonek. Perhaps there was a sort of river walrus that inhabited much of Africa at some point, but overall this is an extremely unlikely theory. For starters, walruses often prefer to live in the um, polar opposite locations of the warm freshwater rivers of Africa. Walruses tend not to do well outside of colder saltwater environments due to temperature and buoyancy differences in, between salt and fresh water. Additionally, it opens you up to predation from the many fierce predators that we do know live in this jungle. Also, walruses don't even live in the southern hemisphere. They live in the north. So yeah, when I said polar opposites, I meant it quite literally. Unintentionally, but you know, it's still pretty funny. The rock art is a pretty interesting subject of debate, so expect a video on it at some point. But the Dingonek could also have been just a large leopard. You could kind of think of this as like a toned down version of the water lion theory. The area these sightings occurred in is pretty much leopard territory, especially back in the early 1900s. But like the water lion theory, the non-feline features of this kind of stand out. And oh, and one I just thought of right now, completely off script, there were recently um, new saber toothed cat remains found in parts of Africa, so I guess you could lump that in there too. Uh, a little, you could probably lump that in with water cats in general, but 
it, it could also have been a saber tooth cat, but the same explanation there. Other theories lean into more reptilian aspects of the Dingonek, with one such theory claiming it to have been a Nile crocodile. The Nile crocodile is no stranger to these waters, and is one of the few animals that could reach the Dingonek's size and length pretty reliably. The biggest problem I have with this theory is that Jordan was an outspoken killer of crocodiles, killing the Nile variety out of hatred towards them. So if anyone was to step up and call it a crocodile, it would have been him. And despite his criminal record, he was pretty well trusted by many of the people of colonial Kenya. And with no body to show for, he probably would have just been better off saying that it was just a Nile crocodile and calling it there. A more interesting theory is that the Dingonek is a Nile monitor lizard, which is widespread throughout Africa and now Florida, because of course, you gotta love Florida. Nile monitors reach lengths of over six foot in length, so perhaps one in Lake Victoria reached a far larger size and a combination of exaggeration could have led to the tale we all know. Regarding the leopard-like pattern, Nile monitors actually do have a pretty similar coloration and pattern to that that someone could easily misreport as, you know, like a scaly leopard-like thing upon seeing it. And of course, the typical explanation is that it was all just a ruse. European explorers learning about local legends, equating it to a dinosaur, and then using it as an excuse to go explore the vast jungles of Africa, having a close encounter to, you know, kind of justify a longer stay. Gordon's reputation may have been good for back then, but I don't think it holds up too well nowadays, and all he really has is the testimony of him and his men. The independent sighting and the locals' report of the dead Lukwata do kind of give it a bit more of a likelihood, but without photos, bodies, or even sightings after 1913 in general, it is highly unlikely to be in the jungle rivers of eastern Africa, but in the same vein, I guess it could still be out there lurking, waiting for someone to find it. Dingadek is a fascinated cryptid, mainly due to the lack of control man has over it. Man cannot find, slay, capture, or even properly identify this one-of-a-kind beast. Although it being a dinosaur or a super cat or some freshwater walrus seem to be impossible, I do feel like the pangolin, leopard, and Nile monitor theories hold a bit more weight. But even then, the story just seems too good to be true. The Dingadek is a creature that is near impossible to properly identify, and its sparse sightings and lack of evidence makes its likelihood of existing extremely low. But despite this, to the people of Kenya, the Dingadek was never meant to be a creature that colonizers could come shoot and drag out of the country off to zoos and collections in the name of exploration and science. The people of Africa have countless legends with creatures just as unique as the cultures that they have birthed them. And the Dingonek is a great showing as to how one of a kind they can be without some dude coming along and just labeling it a dinosaur. Does Lake Victoria hold many secrets waiting to be discovered? Yeah, it certainly does, and the jungles around it as well. And perhaps even a dinosaur, super cat, walrus, pangolin, monitor lizard monsters are out there as well, going about their days unseen and unbothered by men. And that's going to do it for the Dingoneck. Thank you all for watching. This was a very interesting cryptid to look into. And uh, man, uh, there were sure were a lot of theories as to what this thing was. I did have a, a pretty good time researching this animal, looking into the many different aspects of you know, what this could possibly be, what animals live here, you know, stuff like that. Other legends as well, how it intertwined with other, you know, beings. So it kind of shows links between several cultures and different stories and different people. But anyways, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, hey, I just we just hit 4K tonight as of recorded this video. We just hit 4K. That is so hype. So, um... Do, uh, ooh, what special video should I do for 
recently. I don't know. I don't know. I do want to do something pretty big. And, and, and I mean, this, I wasn't making this for the 4K special. It, it was being made beforehand. So I'll, I'll think of a 4K special to to cook up maybe for first day. Who knows? Um, I've been reading the comments. It probably won't be the sloth video. I do want to do that sometime soon. But I don't know if I should get to it this soon. Maybe by later November. Maybe by Thanksgiving I could have that cooked up. But... Oh, Thanksgiving is a first day. That's right. So that could also give you something to watch during Turkey Day. Hey, that's that's baller. See, off the fly, right there. You just you just witnessed that thought process live. A genius in the. Anyways, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like. If you want more of this, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And you know that hype feature. Hey, it's got to be out at some point. All I'm saying, you know, it's going to be out at some point, but I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.